Hi, Amanda. It's great to see you. So I'm Darcy, founder of Wheat, and I am on Treaty 1 territory. So we're the homeland of the Red River Valley Métis and the ancestral lands of Anishinaabe, Ininuak, Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota. So happy to be here with you and uh, welcome to the Weaving Braids of Belonging promotions. Uh, share a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi, Darcy. Hi, everyone. Um, my main name is Amanda Gross. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm coming to you from Asheville, North Carolina, which is the original land of the Cherokee people. Um, and I'm in my home space, which also includes my weaving studio. So <laughs> you see my loom behind me. Um, yeah, I have been working through um, the lens of mistress syndrome for a while now, and my work is really concerned with um, how arts and culture can support white settlers in sustaining the long-term work of anti-racism and decolonization. Um, so that is, you know, thinking about arts in the broadest sense and culture. Um, I have, I'm currently pursuing a, a doctorate in expressive arts. So I'm also focusing on expressive arts and um, how to integrate that work with family members as I'm sharing and unpacking my own experiences with race and gender and class in the U.S. context. Um, and then also, you know, I've done a lot of reflection and writing around that. And I'm at a point in my writing now where I'm inviting family members to read what I've written. And then I'm using art space and expressive art space practices to engage family members with the written material. So there's like layers of different modalities happening there. Um, and my work has been a lot of organizing, um, anti-racist organizing with other status quo and passing white women like myself, who are often um, in these institutions, you know, as gatekeepers, especially as educators, as therapists, as social workers, um, we are overrepresented <laughs> for sure. Um, and that is how I got into that work was through doing anti-racist organizing with youth and um, the young people that I was organizing with. It was a multiracial, multicultural group, but a lot of the youth of color, um, you know, asked me to, to meet with the white women in their life, with their teachers, or there were other um, uh, organizers of youth programs who were also white women. And so I ended up doing a lot of uh, what we call race-based affinity work um, because of that dynamic and because of the overrepresentation of white women in education spaces, especially working with youth of color. Um, so that's one, one thing that one of my connections to this work. Um, and through that, I did a lot of um, supporting educators and learning about um, the school to prison pipeline, understanding how um, institutional racism played out. Um, and, and thinking about ourselves and our positionalities, you know, our own identities, our intersectional identities, and then, you know, what does that mean to work within an institution, to work with humans, how do we, um, you know, work towards racial equity, um, even as we're in these systems and see the harm that's happening. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a lot of where I'm coming from. Yeah. And within the Weaving Braids of Belonging space, this will be a diverse space. Mm -hmm. um, it is intended for people wanting to apply equity, diversity, and inclusion and work within the workplace. And so I'm curious about your, your take on that and how we can bring this work into spaces that may be considered not very creative spaces, you mm -hmm. know, depending on where the person is coming in from, but there may be folks that really don't identify with the sense of belonging in art spaces. So mm -hmm. how does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'll answer the second question first. <laughs> I think we have a lot of wounded artists because our culture does not support, um, especially in workplace settings, like a lot of, a lot, most, you know, work, workplace settings don't really nurture a lot of creativity. Um, and I, I really deeply believe that we all have that inherent creativity and, and that, you know, we've, um, we've been told one of the ways that we've, um, things that messages that we get is that, you know, artists, only certain people can make art and those are artists. And so I really do believe strongly that engaging with and accessing the arts is key to diversity, inclusion, and equity work and any sort of social change based work, because we need to get out of our boxes. Um, 
And when I think about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion work, I'm reminded of uh, what a colleague of mine once said, which is that it, it really could be D-I-E or die because we can't have inclusion without diversity and we can't have equity without inclusion, right? So if you don't have you know, a diverse range of, of humans, then we, we don't, there's not even inclusion to consider. And if we don't have inclusion, then we're not gonna be able to reach some sort of equity because the voices and the people that we need at the table, you know, won't be present um, and, and thinking about how to navigate power in those situations. Um, so I see them as like very interconnected. Yeah, thank you for that frame on that. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to be teaching a course Saturday afternoons, and it, with just the couple minutes we have left, can you share a little bit about how that course will be shaped and what that might look like for folks coming into that? Yeah, so Taylor and I are um, teaching the uh, Cultural Awareness and Intersectionalities course, and um, that is about really understanding ourselves and in our within our histories and our contexts. Um, so you know understanding the the spaces that, that we navigate, um, the positions maybe that we hold within institutions, but especially the bodies that we're in and what has that meant? you know what are the where do we come from in terms of our family culture? Um, how are we understanding and navigating culture in our workplace? Um, how does that impact the humans that we serve or the work that we do? Um, and yeah, how is that all really interconnected? Because I think uh, sometimes diversity and inclusion work can, can look historically at these different silos, like let's talk about gender or let's talk about race. And the intersectionality piece, which um, that term was coined by Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, is really looking at, oh, okay, all of these different aspects of our identities are interconnected and they happen at the same time, right? So we, it's it's more complex, but it's how we live our lives. And we need to understand, especially how, what that means in the workplace settings or the institutions that we're in. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I think it'll be very dynamic um, with Taylor Schenkeveld, who's Métis from Canada, and yourself with your lived experience from the US. I think it's gonna be a really rich space for sharing and creating. So we're looking forward to, to spending that time with you. And registration is open at info at weedinstitute.com. So we look forward to, to our time together. Thanks so much, Amanda. Yeah, thank you, Darcy.